Dear CanCon family, welcome back to CanConnection that provides you with regulatory news in between CanCon conferences. We know many compliance-driven companies and regulators are eager to meet live in March in Boston to set and achieve compliance objectives for chemical control regulations and share experiences for a more sustainable, transparent and circular value chain. To pique your interest for ChemCon the Americas 2025, we have several interesting topics in this Chem Connection. I will discuss with Terry Wells from 3E the latest Tosca developments, Baskut Tunjak from the Massachusetts Toxics Use Reduction Institute will share some of the key lessons learned from Tori's ongoing journey to take toxic use reduction to the next level. And Alexander McPherson of the Investor Environmental Health Network for Clean Production Action will share some best practices and benchmarks of sustainable approaches for industry. And I will share some of the proposed directions of the new EU Commission. But first, Terry Wells of 3E. I recently asked her in Denver to bring us up to speed on the latest Tosca developments. I would say probably the biggest development that we're really watching in the US are the Tosca Section 6 risk evaluations. Um, EPA is currently in the process of finalizing um, some of the risk evaluations and there are a number of risk of management plans that are due to come out in final rule form um, very shortly, probably in the next six months. Um, the other big thing to watch is the new chemicals coming into the task evaluation process. I think one of the things that chemical manufacturers have really learned from the first batch of risk evaluation is they need to really get involved early. And it's not just the manufacturers and importers that need to be worried about this. It's the entire supply chain because the manufacturers and importers cannot uh, know every use case and have all of the data on use and exposure and disposal mechanisms and things like that. So it's really critical that everyone in the supply chain get involved in the TOSCA risk evaluation and risk management process right from the beginning and throughout the entire process to make sure that um, it's a, the best evaluation we can have. It's nice that you mentioned the supply chain because on Monday morning we have already an in-depth seminar with all the various perspectives from a chemical producer all to a downstream user, a retailer, you know, all the different perspectives on risk assessment, management and mitigation in that value chain. So I think that's very valuable. Yeah, that should be an excellent session. Um, and I think that there are a lot of lessons learned from the first batch. So this will be a great opportunity for different actors to understand their role. Much more on Tosca with US EPA and industry on our Tosca Tuesday at Chemical the Americas 2025. Terry and I already briefly discussed the Monday morning seminar on risk management, supply chain communication and transparency. Before that we have a wonderful workshop on regulatory monitoring, both on tools as well as industry approaches. Also on Monday our special in-depth seminar where Latin American authorities provide you with their latest news on regulatory developments and sustainability initiatives. We will all warmly welcome them and other regulators from across the globe to Boston in Massachusetts. I recently visited Massachusetts Toxic Use Reduction Institute. Their innovative approaches help companies, particularly SMEs, to substitute hazardous chemicals with safer alternatives. I asked Tourist Director Basku Tunjak to share some of the key lessons learned from Tourist's ongoing journey to take toxic use reduction to the next level. Well, thanks. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, gosh, our, our journey has been Kind of a long one. We've been around for 35 years as of this year, uh, and we've learned a lot in those years. And I think the first, first thing that comes to mind is that safer alternatives exist, and where they don't exist, they can be developed. And I think our experience has shown that time and time again. Um, when we look at specific instances like the use of particular chemicals, uh, more broadly, we see that you know industry is actually open to and willing to adopt safer alternatives. For example, TCE or trichloroethylene. Here in Massachusetts, it was the result of some childhood cancers uh, that happened in the, the 70s and 80s. Uh, since then, thanks in large part to the Tura program, companies in Massachusetts have been able to reduce their use of TCE dramatically to the point that we're hoping that in the coming years they will, there will be zero reportable uses in Massachusetts of TCE. Tour's journey shows that a transition to a safer alternatives is possible. However, this needs attention and investment. Something I discussed with Ellie McPherson. I asked Ellie to share some of the best practices and benchmarks of sustainable approaches for industry. 
Just to give some perspective on sort of how we think about best practice, um, our investors really leverage tools like the Chemical Footprint Survey or certification programs like the Green Screen or the Environmental Protections uh, Agency's Safer Choice Program, Chem Boards, Verified Chemistry. These all have very clear metrics on how to, you know, advance safer chemical management programs. And, and we really leverage those um, to, again, look at corporate resiliency, future-proofing supply chains, and competitiveness. And so I wanted to just provide some you know, examples of where we're seeing very positive change and the type of change that we would like to talk about at this forum that hopefully can be scaled across all sectors and all companies. And I'm going to talk about three areas. One is we are really seeing hazard-based approaches to chemical management and safety gaining traction. So companies are expanding commitments and using tools like the CFP survey to benchmark progress. Some examples include Reckitt. They have a you know a wide array of consumer-facing company or consumer-facing products. They are working to reduce their chemical footprint um, by 65% by 2030. And they're also working to have 50% of their net revenue come from more sustainable products with a very clear definition that sustainable products is less carbon, less water, and safer chemistries that meet, meet verified chemistry metrics. Walmart, for example, also um, already met their goal to reduce their chemical footprint. Um, originally, they set a 10% goal by 2022. They, they succeeded uh, surpass that with a 17% um, reduction. And a lot of that was achieved through reformulization and um, working to get certification um, to new programs to ensure they were using safer substitutes. Other big companies, other big brands, Ecolab, Dollar General, Dollar Tree, Walt Disney, Becton Dickinson, Procter & Gamble, Target, Rite Aid are just examples. Companies all participate in the Couple Footprint Project and then disclose and share their project, their progress with investors. Also in Europe, we see clear needs for investment. The proposed EU Executive Vice President for Prosperity and Industrial Strategy, Stéphane Sejourné, indicates that their chemicals industry package will be of key importance to ensuring the protection of human health and the environment and for a competitive EU industry. He states that building on years of experience in the implementation of REACH and chemicals legislation, it is clear that the EU needs to accelerate, reduce red tape and provide clarity and certainty for both businesses and consumers. The package will strive to create a more efficient regulatory framework that acts faster to remove harmful substances from the marketplace while providing greater long-term investment certainty for Europe's world-leading chemical companies. He emphasizes that the EU must stand firm in supporting a strong and resilient chemical industry, which is key to creating growth and prosperity in the EU. There is a need to create an enabling framework for investments that drive the transition towards green and digital solutions. The substitution of harmful chemicals should be further supported through innovation and knowledge transfer in industry's transition to safer alternatives. So, a clear vision and ambition from the Commission. Tourist approach has many successful substitution stories. I asked Bashkut how Turi organizes collaboration and innovation. Uh, we work with academic researchers to identify prospects for new alternatives, safer alternatives. Uh, our lab program then takes uh, promising alternatives and fine tunes those to the needs of businesses in Massachusetts. Uh, they also do performance testing to demonstrate that a particular art alternative can work and meet the performance needs of a business. We have a, a training and implementation program as well. And this is really important, not only for us to be able to amplify the individual case studies, success stories that we may have, uh, but also to work more directly with businesses through a, a small army or a cohort, cohort of what we call toxic use reduction planners. These are basically substitution experts that go directly to companies to work with them. And uh, that really gives us the ability to help translate those individual case studies and success stories into a broader impact throughout Massachusetts and beyond. 
So those toxic substitution experts are part of the Turi team or are they an external uh, group? Yeah, they're external to Turi. Uh, Turi is actually a relatively small organization, uh, but those planners help us to amplify our impact. Uh, they may be in-house in a company dedicated to working just with that one company or business, okay. or they may be consultants, you know, working for a, a handful of different um, clients, companies, uh, on not just implementation of Tura and developing the TUR plans that companies are required to do here in Massachusetts, but a whole range of other environmental health and safety issues as well. And so once a certain substance is identified, then the planners will be sent to the industry that is using that substance, or how does that work? Actually, well, the, the companies are required to report on their use above a certain threshold. Um, uh, for all of the substances that are listed under the tour legislation, which is tiered based on higher hazard uh, substances and those that are just hazard subs hazardous substances. Um, and so companies need to report on those chemicals in the list irrespective um, of what other obligations they may have. Uh, so if a chemical is added to that list, then they will have reporting obligations. It may be an entirely new thing for a company if they didn't use any of the other chemicals before that chemical was listed, or it could just be another substance on which they have to develop a toxics use reduction plan as part of their overall planning process. The Massachusetts Toxic Use Reduction Act program is an example of a specific state regulation. I asked Terry to share some important points on state regulations across the US. Yeah, it's been a real challenge to keep up with the state regulations. Um, as the federal government continues to work slowly through, through their risk assessments, um, the states are not waiting to um, wait, see what the federal government does. They're taking action. So um, we've seen a lot of different regulations um, come out, uh, mainly around um, PFAS. We've had a lot of regulations come out around cosmetics, um, consumer product safety, um, and extended producer responsibility. So those are the main focus areas for the states. Um, we have seen some efforts to try to harmonize the regulations between states, um, and that's, to some extent, the newer regulations that we're seeing coming out are uh, somewhat harmonized, but it seems that each state needs to put its own twist on things just to make it uh, a little bit more complex to develop a comprehensive compliance plan and to really um, pay attention to what's going. The definitions are different, the implementation timeframes are different, and the scope of coverage is a little different. So um, it's a lot to keep up with. Yeah, so states, federal, the Americas, are there other points of attention where you would say, hey, pay attention to this? Well, there are a lot of movements um, going on around sustainability in the state of California. So um, they've got microplastics regulations they're talking about. They've got a lot of other initiatives. So um, California is definitely the state to watch. Um, they're adopting a lot of the principles that are um, in Europe. And uh, California is a big influential state, so I keep my eye on California. I'm happy to confirm that the Californian Department of Toxic Substances Control will be at Chemical the Americas 2025 to provide an update on their safer consumer product regulations in the session on state perspectives on chemical control legislation. And of course, California will be present in our Friday morning seminar on PFAS restrictions and impact. So again, we are proud to present a full week of meaningful content and connections at Chemcon the Americas 2025. Next to our focus on regulatory developments related to chemical control regulations, Chemcon the Americas 2025 has a strong focus on sustainability. And therefore in Boston we organize something new. Our Inspire Investment in Sustainable Growth Forum. This two-day forum aims to connect and inspire investors, industry experts and regulators by sharing and exploring implementation and investment experiences in a sustainable value chain. After our shared Sustainable Wednesday, experts on Thursday will provide hands-on experiences and interesting innovation and investment business cases in roundtable discussions with best practices and benchmarks of sustainable approaches in industry. During the forum, we will also discuss imminent threats to investment portfolios, as well as value creation opportunities. I asked Ellie, how can we support investors with the assessment of these threats and opportunities in order for them to innovate and enhance the value? Yeah, so I think if the, the forum addressing threats and opportunities is just key for investors. They're really trying to understand what are the major threats and where are the major opportunities and where is their alignment around those. Um, 
I want to talk about six trends that we hope that we will be talking about at this forum that we think are really important um, to this issue and are driving major transitions. One is consumer sentiment is changing. So we see particularly among younger um, customers, there's growing expectations for ingredient transparency, product safety, sustainability attributes. How are companies meeting these new expectations? That's one area. Two, we see regulations both are on the rise and sometimes not sufficient to protect against risk. So we saw this with the Johnson & Johnson um, scenario where they were using um, talc that was contaminated with asbestos that was legal. It met regulatory um, requirements, but it ended up causing a, a massive business risk in sort of the litigation space. So both how are you know companies preparing for new regulations, but also how are companies understanding that um, they often have to go beyond regulations to protect um, and future-proof their supply chains. The third area is litigation is increasing risks and business costs. And PFAS is obviously um, the, 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 the most significant area of concern regarding that. Um, there's been some accounts that the PFAS lawsuits may eclipse the 200 billion paid by the big tobacco settlement. Um, also, UBS estimates that the total market capitalization of companies um, who will be impacted by PFAS regulations is for $30 trillion. So these are just very significant financial um, liabilities that um, investors want to really understand and, and, and support companies in addressing. As always, we have a lot for you and your peers in store. So please make your peers aware of both Chemco in the Americas 2025 and our Inspire Investment in Sustainable Growth Forum. If you can't wait for more content, the longer videos with Terry, Ali and Bashkut are as always available on our YouTube channel. For now, thank you for watching and looking forward to seeing you in March in Boston. <music>